Thank you. The next item of business is a statement by Shirley Ann Somerville on protecting teacher numbers and children's learning hours at school. The Cabinet Secretary will take questions at the end of her statement, and therefore there should be no interventions or interruptions. I call on Shirley Ann Somerville, Cabinet Secretary, up to 10 minutes, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I am pleased to provide this statement to Parliament today on our commitment to protect teacher and school support staff numbers and the current number of learning hours for children and the action we will take to deliver this. This Government's vision for education in Scotland remains to deliver excellence and equity for all. These measures are critical to our aim that is shared by local government to raise attainment and to substantially eliminate the poverty-related attainment gap by 2026. As I reported two weeks ago, there are promising signs that the attainment gap is once again narrowing. But there is no room for complacency and there remains much work to do to support education recovery and accelerate progress in closing the attainment gap. I want to be clear that I understand the difficult budgetary choices local government faces. These decisions are no less difficult for ministers. Time and time again, we have acted to ensure that local government receives a fair settlement. And we are making very difficult choices to support vital services, and it is essential that the funding allocated supports the outcomes it is intended for. Presiding officer, for this government, this has a clear commitment to improve Scottish education. Maintaining increased teacher numbers is fundamental to that. Before I go into detail, I want to place on record my thanks to our colleagues in local government for their dedication to the delivery of a first-class education for our children and young people. For example, we remain close to record levels of teacher numbers, and our pupil-teacher ratio remains historically low at 13.2. Last year, we witnessed the biggest single-year decrease in the attainment gap in primary numeracy and literacy levels since records began in 2016-17. And the 2022 exam results show pass rates for National Fives, Hires and Advanced Hires increased to record levels for any exam year since current qualifications were introduced, whilst the gap between attainment levels in the least and most deprived areas has narrowed from the 2019 level. To build on that, we have agreed ambitious stretch aims with local government, which sets out each council's own ambitions for their learners. For both overall attainment and in terms of closing the poverty-related attainment gap in literacy and numeracy in primary schools, the collective stretch aims of local authorities is for a 6 to 7 percentage point improvement. If achieved, this would amount to the biggest two-year improvement recorded since the introduction of the challenge. As we support this generation to recover from the disruption to their education caused by the pandemic, I'm grateful for these sustained efforts and I recognise the importance of strong partnership working between local government, central government and Education Scotland to achieve our ambitions. I wish also to address to the current pay dispute and the disruption being experienced by pupils, parents, carers and teachers across Scotland. And I wish to provide reassurance to my commitment to work with local government and teaching unions alike to reach a fair, sustainable settlement that is acceptable to all sides. I also want to pay tribute to the dedication, commitment and hard work of our teachers and school support staff and all those who work alongside them. Delivering positive outcomes, including raising attainment and closing the attainment gap, is a shared endeavour and one in which we are making positive progress. A key element of continuing this positive progress is to ensure there is no reduction in the fundamentals of education delivery, including the number of teachers or support staff and the amount of time children spend learning in schools. My immediate concern is the threat that the numbers of teachers and support staff may start to fall in the next financial year as a result of council budget decisions, and I wish to avoid such an outcome. Local authorities have historically received funding every year to maintain the pupil-teacher ratio, teacher numbers, and to provide places on the teacher induction scheme for all probationers who need one. We also provide a further £14.5 million each financial year to fund teacher numbers and pupil support staff. Combined, this funding was made available and agreed with local authorities to deliver on three specific aims. Maintaining teacher numbers at their current levels in the year ahead, maintaining the number of school support staff at the current levels in the year ahead, and continuing to ensure that there are places available for probationer teachers who need them on the teacher induction scheme. In the year ahead, where these criteria are not met by a local authority, we will withhold or recoup funding that has been given to local authorities for these purposes. Now, I know this decision may not be welcomed by local government, but I have a very clear commitment to improve Scottish education, which we are making good progress on. And I am firmly of the view that we will not do that by having fewer teachers or support staff or less time in schools. 
It is vital that we can maintain increased teacher numbers in the context of the difficult budgetary choices currently faced by both local government and the Scottish Government, while we work towards the delivery of our commitment to increase teacher numbers by 3,500 by the end of this Parliament. As I have said, I understand the financial pressures facing local authorities, and I acknowledge that councils are wrestling with these decisions. Councils have a range of responsibilities and inflationary impacts understandably mean difficult choices are having to be made. That is why the Scottish Government is committed to delivering fairness in the budget settlement for the next year and a new deal for local government in the longer term. Ministers and COSLA leadership continue to discuss how our legitimate and important aim of maintaining teacher numbers can be delivered while respecting local councils' wider priorities which we share. These discussions will continue both as we finalise next year's budget and beyond. Finally, the current pupil week of around 25 hours for primary pupils and 27.5 hours for secondary pupils is well established. It is the backbone of our education provision and benefits all our children and young people. School not only provides the vital learning our children and young people need to succeed, but it is also a safe and a secure place that nurtures them. A reduction to the school week, as reported to be considered by some authorities in recent weeks, would be expected to materially, materially reduce pupil attainment and well-being. That is why I will commence the provision in the Education Scotland Act 2016, which will enable Scottish ministers to set the minimum number of learning hours in a school year. Following thorough consultation, I will then bring forward regulations that will specify the minimum number of learning hours per annum and effectively provide a statutory basis for the pupil week. There is currently some limited variation in delivery across Scotland. This has arisen for a range of reasons. For example, the variation may relate to rural transport requirements, to meeting the needs of our youngest pupils, or to ensuring older pupils can access flexible options as part of their senior phase. The regulation-making power also anticipates that there would, be need, there would need to be flexibility where pupils' well-being requires it, and where, for example, matters are out with the education authority or schools' control. This variation and the need for flexibility would be fully explored in a consultation and considered before regulations are laid. These regulations will be subject to affirmative parliamentary procedure. So in conclusion, Presiding Officer, I am committed to ensuring every child and young person in Scotland has the best opportunities through their education. I am determined that our efforts to accelerate progress on tackling the poverty-related attainment gap will continue. The measures I have outlined today demonstrate this Government's unyielding commitment to closing the attainment gap and making Scotland the best place in the world to grow up. And I will be writing to COSLA today and each individual council in the coming days to set out the details on protecting teacher and support staff numbers and the next steps on learning hours. Thank you. The Cabinet Secretary will now take questions on the issues raised in her statement. I intend to allow around 20 minutes for questions, after which we will move on to the next item of business. I would invite those members who would wish to seek to ask a question to please press the request to speak button and I call on Stephen Kerr. This announcement destroys what little good faith still exists between councils and the Scottish Government. The Cabinet Secretary is threatening councils with sanctions, cutting their budgets even further for failing to deliver policies which she has failed to provide funding for. There has been a decade of underfunding and it is hardly surprising that the EIS has announced an escalation of strike action brought about by this Cabinet Secretary's inaction, including targeting the constituencies of Nicola Sturgeon and Shirley Ann Somerville. Swimming, this this, this uh, announcement will bring about deep cuts. Swimming classes will end. Youth clubs will close. Play groups will close. Rural nurseries will close. School cleaning will be reduced. School crossing patrols will end. Family support will be cut. School trips will be cancelled. Libraries will be closed. Services for children from play parks to school meals will get worse. The Cabinet Secretary is responsible for making our country a poorer place to be a child and a young person. She won't fight for them. All the evidence tells us that she doesn't fight for children and young people's interests around the Cabinet table. Can she honestly say that this announcement will have a positive impact on children in Scotland? Cabinet Secretary. Well, in the most challenging of budget settlements since devolution, we have provided £13.2 billion in the local government settlement, and that is an increase of £570 million. That's a real terms increase 
to local government. I will say, and it probably won't be for the first time, President Officer, as we go through this, if Mr Kerr is suggesting that more money is given to local government, then he must come, and his party must come, in the middle of this budget process that we are in, and give a reasoned and costed way that that can be done. Otherwise, this is bluster in the chamber and no benefit to children and young people. And I would point particularly to the work that is going on in the wider Scottish Government to protect children and young people. And that, of course, is the Scottish Child Payment, in place because of the ineptitude and deliberate policies of the UK Government to ensure that they are targeting children and young people and not alleviating child poverty. We will do that at the same time as protecting teacher numbers and support staff. I call Michael Mara. Thank you, President Officer. We have blind panic in the government and chaos in council chambers. Labour has been warning this government on teacher numbers for months and there was no mention in the red lines in Mr Swinney's uh, budget circular. And now with days to go until budgets are set, we have fines instead of finance from this cabinet secretary and an immediate ring fencing over one third of the budgets of local authorities. Chief executives are telling councillors, President Officer, it is simply not possible to redraw their budgets at this stage. This statement is woeful. It offers zero clarity to parents, pupils, teachers or to taxpayers. So what is the date for the baseline set for teacher numbers in councils? Why is there no clarity on when regulations will be in place? When will parents know if the school week will change? When? And why did it take until the very last minute for the Cabinet Secretary to wake up to this problem? Cabinet Secretary. Well, there have been a number of... Um, times that we have uh, discussed with COSLA our concern that perhaps the £145.5 million that was put into the budget uh, last year would not provide the numbers. Uh, we were unfortunately told uh, that it was too difficult, too costly uh, to provide uh, national government with uh, that information. So therefore, when the teacher census um, came out, it was, of course, immediately apparent uh, to us and action was taken and discussions continued from then. So when we're looking for when the teacher and it is published in December. If Michael Mara wants another bite of the cherry because he uh, didn't he, ask a sufficient that, that question would be a for, in the first place, that would be a matter for then myself, I'm afraid that, that is up to him to decide with the presiding officer. But when it comes to the date when um, we will look at, it will be the teacher census because that is the official statistics that are out. Now, I'm more than happy to discuss with COSLA if there are other ways that we can um, do that, but that is the official statistics that we have. When it comes to the school week, I think I've been very clear in my opening statement about how the government will take this forward. We will move quickly forward with consultation. Uh, local authorities will be under um, no doubt um, the process that we will go through and the fact that we will be protecting the school weeks as it currently stands. And I would expect, therefore, councils to pay close attention to the fact that those regulations will be coming into force in due course. I call Graeme Day to be followed by Megan Gallagher. Uh, thank you, President. Officer. Councils uh, are, we are told, signed up to a shared agenda to address the poverty related attainment gap. And indeed, additional monies have been made available via the proposed Scottish Government budget to support all local authorities in that Scotland wide mission. So, can the Cabinet Secretary advise how the Scottish Government assesses the impact? that reducing the school week and teacher numbers would have on those endeavours, because presumably it would risk sending the progress that has been made into reverse. Cabinet Secretary. Well, I think um, it is of great concern that um, any reduction in teacher numbers or indeed support staff or a reduction in the school week um, will um, have an impact on our ability to tackle the attainment gap. Clearly, and I've said once again, our ambition is to substantially eliminate the poverty-related attainment gap by 2026. Um, and there is no evidence to suggest that reducing teacher numbers, pupil support staff, or the time um, that children are in school uh, would do anything but be to the detriment um, of that policy. And that's exactly why um, we are providing councils and have provided councils with that £145.5 million on that basis. I call Megan Gallagher to be followed by Bob Doris. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Last week, the Cabinet Secretary set out four red lines to councils. These include teacher numbers, length of the school week, pupil support assistance and probationary teachers. Well, I hate to break it to the Cabinet Secretary, but councils have already made savings in these areas in previous years. Some councils have no choice but to look at the savings to balance the books. So, as the Cabinet Secretary is keen to set red lines in education, 
Perhaps you can outline what other savings councils should make to balance the budgets in the face of SNP cuts. Cabinet Secretary. Well, we have previously, of course, seen um, an increase in uh, teacher numbers, thanks um, in great part to the investment that the Scottish Government um, has put forward on this. And indeed, we've uh, recently seen increases in the number of pupil support um, assistants. Uh, it is very, very um, important that we recognise and appreciate that councils have difficult decisions to make. Uh, we all do as we set these budgets. But I would simply say to Megan Gallagher and others that where we have a joint agreement, as we did, um, on the issue of teacher numbers and pupil support staff numbers and where that money has been allocated on that basis. I do not think it is surprising, therefore, that the Scottish Government will in follow-up to ensure that that is delivered. That is why the money was put in. It is a shared expectation and understanding that that would happen. And I do not think it is surprising that we will continue to ensure that those policy decisions are taken to support that. I call Bob Doris to be followed by Martin Whitfield. Uh, thank you, President Officer. The Cabinet Secretary set out that additional funding has been provided this year, which was agreed with local authorities that it would be used to recruit teachers and teaching assistants. But, but Cabinet Secretary, the picture will vary dramatically across the country. So can I ask what analysis the Scottish Government has carried out as to the extent to which the funding is actually used for its intended purpose? Because MSPs in this place will be watching carefully what happens in their local areas. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, that funding of £145.5 million was baselined to the Local Government Settlement for 2022-23. Uh, therefore, monitoring did not take place specifically um, on that. But we did uh, keep a very close eye, therefore, on the summary statistics for schools that were published in December, and that is from the teacher census that takes place earlier um, in the year. That is the uh, statistics that are available to ensure um, that we actually see an improved picture in the number of teachers. Unfortunately, uh, that did not happen, as I have already mentioned, and I think as Mr Doris would expect. Therefore, the Scottish Government has taken further action, because any further reduction would be wholly unacceptable. Martin Whitfield to be followed by Fulton McGregor. I am very grateful, Deputy Presiding Officer. It is a very challenging statement, this, in its lack of detail. The Cabinet Secretary has just said that the um, £145.5 million was not monitored. Is that not because, in fact, the census was not agreed with COSLA as being how it was going to be monitored? And is there a definition of school support staff, or is it now pupil support staff? And what is the date that the baseline that that will be taken from? There are a significant number of questions here, but of those, can I just ask you, will Glasgow be allowed to cut the school week? Cabinet Secretary. Well, we have made the commitment to ensure that the school week will be maintained um, right across um, Scotland. Uh, when it comes to, um, again, how to measure the number of teachers, uh, there is only one um, level of national statistics which looks at that, and that is the teacher census. I said we asked um, COSLA to work with us um, in year to provide further reassurance, but that was not possible. If they are now saying it is possible that there is a different way of doing that, eh, my door is open to those eh, discussions. They have since suggested eh, that there are more teachers in post and in eh, the census, eh, but they do not actually say and reassure that that is a net position. Um, and it is very important that we have a shared understanding um, of these uh, numbers. That is why the teacher census is national statistics is the most sensible way to do that. The same is applicable as well um, to pupil support assistance, although we will not obviously impart the teacher census. Um, they are um, dictated to in different statistics. But again, uh, we are trying still at this late point to work with COSLA, to work with them to see if we can get some agreement, even if they do not agree with the decision that I have taken to move forward with the protection of teaching pupil support staff numbers, to ensure that we can agree how that can be monitored and maintained during the year. I call Fulton McGregor to be followed by Willie Rennie. Yeah, thank you, President Officer. Cabinet Secretary, despite the damaging effect of inflation in the Scottish budget and the complete inaction from the Tories in Westminster, can you outline how the Scottish Government is prioritising education in the 23-24 budget? Cabinet Secretary. Well, we have uh, protected councils in the most challenging budget settlement since devolution. As I said earlier, uh, there is a provision of £13.2 billion in the local government settlement. That is a real terms increase of 1.3 per cent since the Budget Act of 22-23. And it is also, we now see in 2021, which is the last year we have statistics for, this was the sixth year in a row that education, gross revenue expenditure, saw a real terms increase. And I think that is uh, two demonstrations of how we are attempting, even the most 
most difficult of some circumstances to provide a fair settlement for local government and also to ensure that we continue our investment in education. I call Willie Rennie to be followed by John Mason. She, she, she makes it out as if councils are desperate to cut teacher numbers because they want to damage our schools. The reality is that her government has cut their funding, which has forced them, as she admits, to make incredibly difficult choices. Now, she lectures us every single day that we've got to come up with identified funds to fund our spending asks. So where is she doing the same for local government? Is she going to spell out what they should cut? And if not, will she withdraw this indictment? Uh, before, before I ask the Cabinet Secretary to respond, I would remind members that a bit of polytest doesn't go wrong. Uh, a subsequent referral to the pronoun might be okay, but perhaps initially one could refer to the Cabinet Secretary. Just I think that would perhaps be a wee bit more polite. Cabinet Secretary. Yes, I, I presume she means me, um, presiding officer. I'll work um, on, on that basis. Uh, I think it is very important that I do recognise, I have done in my original statement, that councils have difficult decisions to make. It, it, I do appreciate uh, that we all do as we set our budgets, uh, but I would go back to the point uh, that I made previously, and I will make it again for Mr Rennie. Where we have a joint agreement on how money should be spent, I don't think it is unreasonable that the Scottish Government follows that up to ensure that is delivered. Now, I appreciate, therefore, that local government will have difficult decisions to make on the areas where we perhaps do not have a joint agreement about how money should be spent, and that will be a difficult process for them. But where we have a shared understanding, where we have a shared agenda, I do not think it is surprising that the Scottish Government will follow up to ensure that the policy is delivered. I call John Mason to be followed by Ross uh, Thank you very much. Uh, the Cabinet Secretary emphasised her commitment to working in partnership with local government, and I wonder if she could give some more detail as to how she will work in partnership to reduce the poverty-related attainment gap. Cabinet Secretary. Well, there is a great deal of work that is going on in conjunction um, with local government and um, in partnership around the poverty-related attainment gap, and that is a shared mission that we do have against, uh, through national and local government. Uh, I would point to, as one example of that, the Scottish Attainment Challenge uh, funding that goes through, and also the important work that has been developed with local authorities, Education Scotland and national government about the stretch aims. Uh, this was a new way of working. This was an innovative and partnership way of working and I think we work well together on that and I look forward to approaching um, that next year to see how we can continue and indeed build on that. I call Ross Greer to be followed by Rona Mackay. Thank you. Following on from Bob Doris's uh, line of questioning, I'm struggling to reconcile the stated purpose of the £145 million that was provided this year with the results of the school staff census outlined by the Cabinet Secretary and caused a statement in the briefing that they sent to MSPs today that that money was spent on school staff. I, I can't see how that happened, but the number of school staff actually fell. So could I ask the Cabinet Secretary what correspondence she's had with COSA on this and what explanation they've provided as to these two different positions apparently being reconcilable? Uh, well, I, I note in the COSLA briefing that came out just before uh, my, my statement that they seem to suggest that it has been spent on teachers, support staff um, and on pay. I would point to the fact uh, that there was an agreement uh, to ensure that this money was spent on teachers um, and on uh, support staff. There is additional funding that also goes in around uh, the historical um, pay settlements that have been made. But as I said, uh, that COSLA briefing um, on that point came up just before the statement. I'm more than happy to follow that up and will, of course, do so uh, with COSLA um, and uh, make sure uh, there's uh, further details that either the local government can provide to us about how that money has been spent um, or indeed vice versa, we should continue that dialogue. I call Rona Mackay to be followed by Pam Gozo. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Teacher recruitment and retention is an issue in many rural areas across Scotland. So can I ask the Scottish Government for an update on how it will encourage teachers to work in areas where there is a difficulty recruiting teachers? Cabinet Secretary. Well, uh, the member raises a really important point that recruitment and retention um, is difficult, particularly in some of our rural areas, and that can lead to a real challenge in ensuring 
um, that teacher numbers um, are maintained at a particular level. Uh, of course, local authorities are responsible for the recruitment and retention and the deployment of teachers. There are flexibilities within the SNCT for pay arrangements, for example, so a local authority can provide an increase in the salary of a teacher if they are facing recruitment challenges. But I do recognise uh, there is also an important role for Scottish Government to work with our local authorities to see if there is anything that more that can be done on this issue. Uh, we do have um, working groups that look particularly at recruitment and retention, and this particular issue is something that we will be coming back to this year. And I call Pam Gosel. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Cabinet Secretary, once again, here we are, debating a statement with no substance and no solutions. Fewer pupils in primary schools are achieving the expected CFE level in literacy, reading, writing, listening, talking and numeracy. And this announcement will only lead to the other parts of the education budget being cut. Does the Cabinet Secretary accept that this will have a negative impact on attainment? And if not, will, uh, will the impact, does she, what impact does she expect the cuts to have? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I go back to the point that we have actually seen um, an increase in attainment levels, both in numeracy um, and um, in literacy at primary levels, and that's a, a real testament to the hard work of our teachers and support staff to recover from the pandemic. But I would say to Pam Gozel, once again, if she doesn't like and thinks that more money should be going to local government, then where will it come from in the budget? It's already been um, set out. There is an opportunity. We are right in the middle of the budget process. But once again, we have another member of the Conservative Party coming forward, demanding that more money is spent, but absolutely no detail and no constructive offer to work with the government on how that could be done, President Officer. Thank you, Cabinet Secretary. That concludes that ministerial statement, and there will be a very short pause before we move on to the next item of business, should frontbench teams wish to change position. Thank you.